What is up everyone, it is Sacred Sain here, welcoming you back to another video. Today we are going to be doing the third part of my collaboration with Dragonstar Productions on the series What if the Z Fighters learned fusion early? If you end up liking today's video then please consider subscribing, it is free and you can always unsubscribe later. Also if you want to join my discord server then there is a link to that in the description of the video. You can talk to me and my community, grind for roles, hang out, and if you put your eye on the Artex channel and 10 people react with a star, it will get featured at the end of a video. Also, I'm going to start uploading on my gaming channel Sacred Storm at some point in the near future, so I ask that if you like gaming content, then please subscribe to that as well. There will be a link to that channel in the description of the video. Also, if you want to support me and the channel, then you can become a channel member. There's a link in the description of the video to become one. There are multiple tiers, and each of them give you more and more perks. If you want to see another collab with me and Dragonstar, then make sure to smash that like button. And with all of that out of the way, let's get into the third episode of... What if the Z Fighters learned fusion early? So Dragonstar ended off part 2 at the Broly movie, and that is where we're going to be picking things up. The Broly movie remains mostly the same, up until Goku and Vegeta decide to fuse in order to defeat Broly. This is where a major change happens, as Goku and Vegeta don't fail the fusion at all, meaning Gogeta is born an entire hour earlier than in canon. Which changes quite a bit since Broly, even though being powerful, will be weaker than when he faced Gogeta originally, meaning Gogeta has an even greater advantage against the Saiyan, and this time when he finishes the battle against Broly, he doesn't fire off a big bang Kamehameha, but he simply knocks out the brute meaning Sheilai doesn't need to wish to send Broly to Vampa. Frieza scoffs, attempting to walk back to his ship, however Gogeta appears in front of the Space Emperor. His Vegeta side taking over, and he tells Frieza that he isn't getting away that easily. A drop of sweat then rolls down Frieza's face, as Gogeta then fires a single key blast, and he kills the Space Emperor once and for all. Gogeta then defuses, and Goku and Vegeta then walk over to the unconscious Broly on the ground. Broly would then wake up, getting up off the ground, and Chi-Lai and Lemo would then walk beside him. Goku says Broly was super strong, and he would love to train with him sometime. Broly lets out a small smile, but Chi-Lai steps in, saying she won't let them hurt Broly again. Goku gives a childish laugh, and he says that it would only be sparring, and since they have no place to stay, he is sure Vegeta and Bomber could give them a place to stay. Chi-Lai looks at Vegeta, Vegeta grunting, but agreeing that he will get Bulma to get them a place to stay. We now head into the Moro arc, which starts off basically the same as in canon, other than the fact that Boo is dead. So the Galactic Patrol comes to Earth to recruit Goku and Vegeta to help take Moro down. Broly stays on Earth, so the events of Namek remain the same, as Goku and Vegeta decided not to fuse against Moro, and Goku and Vegeta both go on their separate training paths. Vegeta training on Yardrat, and Goku training under Mirus to unlock Ultra Instinct Omen for the first time, since he has never actually accessed it in this timeline. We now skip to Moro's fight with Ultra Instinct Goku. That fight remaining basically the same, however Goku is slightly weaker, but at the same time, Gohan, Piccolo and Broly are taking on 7-3. Gohan and Piccolo would be able to fight against 7-3 with perfect synergy, while Broly is mainly on the sidelines and only in his base form. But when he sees Gohan and Piccolo being beaten down, Broly's anger boils to the surface, and he transforms into his Akari state, then jumping in and landing a right hook on 7-3, sending him crashing into the ground, and Broly would then grab 7-3's face, dragging him across the rocky terrain, and then Broly's chest would connect with 7-3's face, creating a massive explosion and sending 7-3 flying. Gohan and Piccolo both look in shock, but they both begin to smirk as they jump back into the fight and they work along with Broly to beat down 7-3. Piccolo uses his stretchy arms to restrict 7-3's movements, while Gohan uses a solar flare for the same reason. Gohan and Broly then rush towards 7-3 alongside each other, and they both land a consecutive uppercut, sending 7-3 up into the air, where Piccolo then kicks 7-3 back into the ground, creating a giant crater. Gohan and Broly would then fly next to Piccolo, and the three would all power up attacks. Piccolo with a special beam cannon, Gohan with a Masenko, and Broly with a mouth blast. The three then fire their attacks, several three attempting to fire off an attack of his own to counter them, however their combined power is simply too much for him, and several three is heavily injured, then running to Moro's side. 
Vegeta still shows up to save Kakarot from getting his ass whipped by Moro, and he would still use Spirit Vision on him as per normal, and like in canon, Moro absorbs 7 free, and he not only regains his former power, but he becomes even stronger. Goku gets back up, powering up into Ultra Instinct Taimun, and he stands beside Vegeta in Blue Evolution. Gohan and Broly then also show up, with Piccolo staying back, as he knows he would just get in the other's way if he stepped in now. Vegeta is the first one to attack, being arrogant, however this is when Moro evades Vegeta's attack and grabs the back of his neck, stealing his techniques, including spirit vision. Moro then chops Vegeta on the back of the neck, knocking him out instantly, and he then looks back to the other three fighters, and he asks if they plan on just standing there, or actually fighting him. Goku and Broly both rush at Moro in unison, while Gohan gives support from above. Anytime Moro would attack Goku, Broly would land an attack on Moro, while Gohan shoots a Key Blast from above, and any time Moro would attack Broly, Goku would land an attack, while Gohan would yet again shoot a Key Blast from above. And even though this coordination would seem to work to begin with, the three would quickly realise that the Magician isn't sustaining any damage from their attacks, and Moro would then give an evil grin as he raises his arm into the air, and he shoots a single Key Blast, going straight through Gohan's chest, the life leaving the half Saiyan's body, as his body then falls to the ground. Goku falls out of Ultra Instinct Toman, tears in his eyes, while Broly can't control his sadness and unrivaled rage. Goku would wipe his eyes, hearing Mirus' words in his mind, and he would attempt to finally master Ultra Instinct. However, he is not only far too emotional to do so, but he simply has not got enough of a handle over Ultra Instinct. Broly, meanwhile, is screaming out of pure rage as his pupils explode and his hair turns yellow. Broly accessing Super Saiyan once again and taking the fight to Moro, seeming to have the advantage over the Magician. Goku just thinks himself lucky that Broly's uncontrollable rage is focused on Moro at the moment. However, if Broly defeats Moro, then he fears for the planet's safety. This is when Vegeta wakes up and he sees Broly out of control and beating Moro to a bloody pulp. Vegeta asks if Goku's new power will be able to take Broly down, but Goku shakes his head, saying Broly has far surpassed Ultra Instinct Omen. If only he was able to master it, maybe then he could be stronger than Broly, but at his current level, he just can't. Vegeta looks down, attempting to think of a strategy, as he tells Goku that Broly's power is growing far too rapidly for his spirit vision to be effective. In the end, the two know there is only one way they can defeat Broly and Vegeta surprisingly shows little reluctance to the idea, which maybe isn't that surprising because of how many times Vegeta has fused in this timeline. Moro is finally killed by Broly, and as Broly looks around, his uncontrollable anger forcing his body to look for his next opponent, Gogeta is born once again, quickly powering up into Super Saiyan Blue, as he would have a battle with Broly, very similar to their first encounter. However, like before in this timeline, Gogeta would end the battle by knocking Broly out. The Dragon Balls would then be gathered, everyone killed by Moro and his men being revived, and since the Granola arc hasn't finished yet, I won't be covering that, so we're going to be leaving things off here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this collaboration series with me and Dragon Star Productions, and if you did, then make sure to like, comment, and please do subscribe. It is quick and easy to do. Also, I want to give a huge thank you to Dark Rock Tanksky, Yeti Myth, and Hype for all being channel members. If you want to be shouted out at the end of a video, and get other perks like Yeti Myth, Hype and Rock Tanksky here, then there is a link in the description down below to become a channel member. It greatly supports me, and it helps me immensely. With all of that out of the way, comment down below a series you would like to see me do next. And yeah, goodbye guys.